Arkasından konuşalım. Evet. Hemen arkasından <gülüyor> önünden konuşabiliriz. Ee, ah, okay, great. No, I will be speaking now in English, but so that you could understand the uh, Were you talking about me that whole yeah, Yes, we, I we thought so. We tried to gossip right after, but we didn't dare to, so don't worry. Okay, okay. Right. <gülüyor> no, no, now I will be uh, speaking in uh, English mainly. Ee, sizden kulaklı olmayan varsa biz aramızda uh, İngilizce devam ettireceğiz. <gülüyor> uh, okay. So if you if they need any um, translation, they will go. Okay. Okay. Um, so our subject is, I must admit, very depressing. Uh, the underrepresentation of women in the film industries all around the world. There's nothing particular about the United States of America or the European Union or the Asian countries or the or Turkey. Uh, the statistics uh, are really uh, the worst part of it. When you look at the numbers, you see that in a huge film industry like America, including Hollywood and the independents, uh, you, you know, only uh, one number reaches up to 30%, and that is the number of the female speaking female parts in the films. Not only the leading ones, not only the supporting ones, all of the speaking female parts in the whole American film industry makes up to 30%. So 70% of men versus 30% of women. And we don't have very detailed statistics, unfortunately, in the good old Europe. Uh, there is a European Women's uh, Audiovisual Network, IWA, uh, which is trying to uh, monitor the European film industry, and they end up with a statistic like only 21% of all the films are directed by women. And this, this is very hard to get because most of the countries in the uh, wide sense of Europe, meaning from uh, Britain to Turkey, Georgia, Armenia, Israel, like the uh, geographical, uh, cultural Europe, uh, only a few countries have real statistics. But by looking at just the representation of women in the film festivals uh, and in the films released in the cinemas, the, these are like, not, again, the repressing number that we reach to. And the number of the actresses and everyone working uh, in the industry are so low. They're usually less than 25 or 20 percent in all over the world, in America, in Turkey, in Europe. Uh, so, in such an industry, uh, what can we talk about? How can we improve the place of the women? Uh, what are the you know, personal experiences these wonderful actresses have been going through? Uh, because obviously it's a battle out there. You know, women are trying to get uh, in a production, uh, they're trying to find uh, support for their projects. For example, in Europe, uh, unlike America, there is public funding, and only a, you know, 16% uh, of the women can get uh, the public funding in Europe. 84% belongs to projects by men, written and directed by men. Okay, the depressing situation is this. Now, let's discuss <laughs> about <laughs> it. What can we do? I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm talking and writing about it. <laughs> and we're criticizing every festival who doesn't have enough women in the lineup. We're writing about the... Uh, uh, gender problems in the films, but when it comes to actually working in these films, what do you face? So I would like to start with a question uh, like, how many uh, women directors have you worked with? You and know, I've actually worked with a lot. Um, yeah, so that's, that's nice. Good. Yes, yeah. let's discuss yeah. about this. Let's start like that. <laughs> yeah, um, is this on? It is, it is. It is. You can it Yes, I've worked with Daisy uh, Mayer in Party Girl, Rebecca Miller, uh, Zoe Cassavetes in Broken English. I've, I've been very lucky to have worked with women, and I, uh, the way that women approach storytelling and nuance and characters and detail and uh, empathy and humor, I just, I love, you know, and there's not this dynamic where you're the object, you know, and you have to be, you're, it's more human. So, you know, when you were talking, it's like, yeah, how to be positive about this. Um, it's, so, it's, it's strange that, that it's, it's happened and uh, that it's really come to this. And you kind of think, like, where does it come from? How did this happen? 
I think the rise of video games has a lot to do with it and the speed in which uh, we're consuming uh, images and as we pass our screens, as we um, just blow through things. It's, it's very male, you know. Um, I don't know how, we, it's good that, you know, we, we talk about it and raise these, these issues and, uh, you know, Variety and Women in Film were, were at Cannes last year. Um, so that's good because I think it's, it's not, it, it, it's a lot to do with women um, and women having voices. I've been able to work with a lot of women, so I'm, I'm blessed. But how can we affect uh, storytelling um, so that it's not coming from this uh, aggressive place? And I think there will be new, new forms of storytelling. You know, we have a, a whole new screen right now. Everyone on their iPads and their iPhones and, uh, uh, I'm expecting and, and hoping for more creativity and more storytelling uh, that's more, that has a longer form even, that's not just cinema, you know? So uh, that's how I get through my day and being positive. Um, you know, I always expected to be the friends to all these actresses in these movies. And we were talking earlier. Yeah. And you've, you've played a lot of friends, and I love that. You know, the, the kooky neighbor, um, the wise woman, the, the neighbor who knows things. And, and you, I've seen in the last 20 years just such a drop in, in um, women having friends, men having female friends, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So there's a, a kind of a lightness and a joy that is, uh, that is desperately missing I think in these times where films are more about uh, being able to be uh, transferred into video games and toys. <laughs> That's my positive uh, uh, answer, everybody here in Istanbul. Um, yeah, what do you think about that? I think that uh, the new, let's say, the new technology, for example, the virtual reality and all this new access to have a word to say without also having big budgets yes. is possible now. And I, I hope that more women will be just doing more movies, not only with the big industry yeah. and the big distribution. Right. And then they will, they will just begin to, to try also this new technology. Yeah, new media. Yeah, new media. New media. Yes, I yes, think it, I agree. It, the hope I have is about that. Me too. You know, in America, I don't know if you if you listen to a lot of podcasts. Do you listen to a lot of podcasts or radio shows like spoken spoken no. stories? No, on we really no. read. <laughs> yeah, well, there's a new um, kind of a new thing in uh, popularity with these with these podcasts and storytellers through the radio that yeah. you would never it see on the internet. It once too. in yeah. 60s. Also in Turkey, also. we had also this. Yes. So you can tell a story on your, on your phone with your friends. You don't even have to be on camera and people are, are listening. And I find that really promising because we need, I don't feel that cinema is delivering a personal empathetic experience like it did when I was a kid. Like what inspired me to be in movies was uh, an emotional kind of human, funny, you know, um, thing that I, I don't see it in the material anymore so but i am i am hearing it in things like podcast mm -hmm. or spoken word mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there's a, a series called the moth in uh, in america and they're storytellers not just celebrities or artists but firemen and chefs and doctors and they find these uh you know like moths around a flame you know, mm -hmm. we, we, we want to hear the story. And uh, so they've created this, this form, and it's, and it's wonderful. So um, I want to encourage people to, to be positive about that. Because at the, the bottom of it, it's, the screen is, is in cinema is for um, a collective uh, experience where we can feel um, like mm -hmm. we belong. <laughs> when we count, <laughs> right? you know, that you have worked with six uh, women, women directors, yes. it was very good, you know, it's a good number that yeah. we were happy to find out, like, six of them you've already yes. worked with. What was the difference? Can you tell us a little bit? Because, you know, when we talk about, <sighs> the, uh, you know, male dominance and 
excuse the term gentleman, but macho culture. Of course, Turkey being in the Middle East has a little uh, priority <laughs> in that. So what was it like uh, working with women and men? I must tell that also very often men with whom I worked were have been very near to me. And it was maybe the the the intimacy with women director which was more effective than with men director. Mm -hmm. um, I was just thinking about this because we just can't <laughs> with how many women director I worked just before entering the stage. And uh, for example, uh, the Danish directors, Elizabeth Regard, yes. we, we, we had a very deep relation with her. Maybe it doesn't occur so much with men directors. It not, it's not always with them. With them it's sometimes, but with women there is more. If you have affinity, of course, you can, you can go on in a very more deep, also with Isotta Toso in Italy, mm -hmm. it was the, the, the case. Also in Turkey, I must say, for example, uh, one short movie I've met with Banu Akseki, uh, she's a Turkish origin mm -hmm. Belgian director. It mm -hmm. was very nice uh, work with her. Yeah. Do you feel that it's working with a woman, a female director, is, is like they're a great hostess? Like you're coming into their home. That's how. That's kind of how. Yes, I feel. it's. Uh, let's say that this doesn't happen always with men. It happens more often, let's say, with women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm usually more interested in the creation of the female characters by men and uh, by women directors. Of course, like some of the uh, directors are you know, so talented, so good, they create the characters equally well. But have you felt a difference uh, between the characters, you, the parts you've been playing that are created by men and uh, women? Is there a difference like that? Have you liked like some of them? Have you find one of them more genuine than the other? Has there been any experience, a specific experience like that? Um, <coughs> Every, ex you know, work experience is so different and unique. Yeah. And so you have a, a great director and you create this, um, you know, this dance, this, um, this language. Um, and mostly it's nonverbal. I mean, I don't know about you, but there's not that. There's talking, but there's just a feeling of belonging and feeling uh, protected in your world that you're creating and this fantasy that everyone's building. And... Um, whether or not it's there's friction, or if it's uh, if it's completely open, it's you know every work experience is is different, and you trust it. I, I don't really think of it in terms of male and or female, because uh, every director becomes like a parent, and uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> you bring um, you know a love there, or an expectation, or an openness and a, a willingness to. Uh, be an extension of them to, uh, because you're, you're working for them, you know, it comes from them. So the best is when you respect who you're working for and, uh, and that you uh, think what they're doing is, is beautiful. And yes, mm -hmm. I think the best is when the respect is mutual. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the space the director gives to you and the one you, you want to have. Mm -hmm. When it's the coincidence is good, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And when it's not, it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> you are yes. You're both so, you know, uh, sparkling uh, actresses that sometimes when I watch your movies, I may forget about maybe some of the lead parts, but always remember your parts, that you stand out. That is really, uh, you know, a pleasure for a critic, to, you know, to watch the film and always remember the part, be it lead, be it a supporting character. Okay. Uh, so do you have any difference, I mean, apart from the physical, involvement in the film. What is the difference for you to lead the film or to be a supporting actress in the film? I think it's harder to play a small part.
than it is to play a big mm -hmm. part um, because there's just more, there's a lot more that you don't know and that you um, sporadically coming into the story is, you know, there's a focus that you have to kind of maintain and um, a kind of a, a level or a particular note that you're not on set the whole time, so you don't know exactly what, what that is, and you just trust your instincts, and um, it's, a, it's another way of, of, of working than when you, uh, when you carry a film and you have the map. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you're, you, uh, uh, you carry uh, the story, I think, is much easier. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You know a lot more, and uh, you have much more time to communicate what you know mm -hmm. about the character. It's not the case when you have a supportive role, mm -hmm. a supportive part, then you have to use very, let's say, very... Narrow? Yeah, very narrow part of it, and then give the sensation of all the rest that you cannot tell in the story because you have no enough space to tell all the details you already created in your mind about your character. Right. Because even if you make a very little character, you, n you need to, to know this person. Yeah. You, know, you, you need to invent this person. Then, and you don't have all this, you don't dominate all this time to communicate maybe little other details about this character, then you have to be very economic with yeah, what you do. <laughs> it feels like a, s it yeah, it feels more like a sacrifice, right? Yeah, you have a little part that you're like, oh, it, oh I kind of sacrificed this character because she couldn't yes. fully express herself or yes. be seen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's interesting to hear. Um, how about the um, character uh, herself? Uh, how do you relate to them? I mean, how much of your uh, personal ideas about this character, which is you know offered to you, uh, do you take in consideration whether you like her or not, whether you admire her or not, whether <laughs> you I don't know <laughs> <laughs> sympathize or not? How how much of it do you uh, put in consideration? Um, we were just talking earlier backstage. Uh, Sarah has uh, played a really mean woman lately, <laughs> and yes. how much in fun that is. In the first film, film, yeah. <coughs> and so, so have I. And uh, I love playing um, difficult uh, women uh, uh, uh, more than than nice women. Um, so, what was I going to say? Um, well, you become like. I think your character's therapist in a way, mm -hmm. and then you become your your own therapist, <laughs> and you kind of, you know, if you're playing someone that's cranky, and then you you f find yourself wanting to snap at someone, you know, then you know that that that character's in play. I remember um, I played a vampire in a movie uh, called Blade oh, Trinity. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, everyone. Mm -hmm. And um, thank you, thank you, Will. Um, <coughs> thank, uh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, and <laughs> and um, it was such a strange experience to play a vampire, and uh, you know the contacts and the teeth and everything. And I was I was a mean vampire. She wasn't she wasn't nice. And uh, I um, I kind of acted out one day with uh, the the crew around. I was just like <laughs> you know to someone, and uh, she beat me backstage. <laughs> You know, like that, and I made my makeup artist cry, and uh, that was, uh, you know, I was just joking, but she <laughs> thought I was serious, and then I had to, I had to hug her, mm -hmm. and console her. Um, we're great friends now, and uh, I just spoke to her last week, so it's all good. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's more, it's, it's. Uh, you know, you watch yourself, you entertain yourself. I mean, I like to uh, always come at things with being funny. Yes, I found it more, f I found it was more fun. Yes. To make a character like this than to make a very nice and very, <laughs> let's say, um, a woman in solidarity with all Everyone, people, very right. empathical one. 
the one in which you make a very mean character is more fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. who's is yeah, not conforming. Yeah. A non conformist. <laughs> yeah. Yes, those are always mm-hmm. fun. You know. It's not standing out as a vampire, but the character in Pomegranate was very interesting. Yes. It was yes. you know, the dark side of that character was yes. also yes. and it was a leading part and can you l- tell us a little bit about this film and the character? Yes. Uh I I, I it was a good uh, experience I must say because it was uh, it's an independent movie and I I, I had the leading part and uh, uh, it was, for example, in this movie, I, I made this character in my in my mind because when I uh, I live with her, of course, for a while before shooting, just uh-huh. to thinking about her. How and, long? Uh, it depends because we shoot it in very short time because we had no like three weeks. N- um, yes, it was two or three weeks because mm-hmm. we had no money yeah. to to finance it. And um, for example, m- while we were shooting, I had this revolver in my hand mm-hmm. for a long time, and I discovered all of a sudden with the gun. Yeah. With the gun, then it's something to have a gun in your in your hand. Mm-hmm. It was uh, an experience for me because mm-hmm. it was really the first, the very first time. I had the gun in my hand, mm-hmm. and to have it, it's heavy, and I, I really felt what it brings to you. Yeah, this sense of power. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. It's incredible, like experience, and I. It opened my mind mm-hmm. to understand a lot of things in the world. Let's uh, say to yeah. have a gun in your hand, mm-hmm. because I was a long time. Let's say the first day of shooting in which I had this gun in my hand, I had some pain in my arm Mm -hmm. after, because you are tense Mm -hmm. to have the gun in your hand. It's not a very relaxed position. Yeah, it's heavy. It's heavy and it's terrible. Then I discovered what she could also feel, because it, it had such an effect on me to have that gun in my, in my hand. Yeah. Then I could play, let's say, in a more effective way because of the gun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It became more true for me because mm-hmm. of the gun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Do you have such experience? Well, it's um, I, when I was in Blade Trinity, um, mm. we worked a lot of night shoots, mm-hmm. and uh, I had to uh, shoot a gun and kill one of the lead vampires. And um, it was about four o'clock in the morning. I had taken a nap um, on the floor, on, you know, with the, on mm-hmm. my purse, with my feet up. I had these contacts and the teeth and the heels and then like, you know, three or four, they're like, we're, we're ready for you. We know, we you know. Have to <laughs> shoot, <laughs> you have to shoot, you know, you have to go and you have to shoot the gun and kill the guy that's up there walking on the, uh, on the, you know, and they built this huge mm-hmm. set. Yeah. The set. And you, then you have to walk really gracefully because you're a vampire. Mm-hmm. And um, so I started doing that, you know. And um, I was like, <laughs> and uh, the director, David Goyer, came over to me and he said, That was great. I know, I know you're tired, but uh, we're going to go again. Try not to make that sound with your mouth. <laughs> And I said, <laughs> I, what, really? I was making that. And he said, yeah. And uh, we could, you could see your mouth move and we could hear you. And <laughs> so I was like, well, the only time I've shot a gun was, you know, watching Charlie's Angels on yes. TV. I'd never, I'd never shot a gun before. And uh, so anyway, um, it was hard for me. To, to not make that sound with my, you know, with my mouth, that um, But I did it. I did it. And uh, I think I, I played a convincing vampire. 
Now we all see what it means to have the girl power. That's why they don't give them the, you know, the action heroines. That's right. That's why. Oh my God. They're dangerous with guns, my God. <laughs> okay, let's go to other parts without guns then. <laughs> so without guns, like, uh, it's like one of the uh, most um, deeply emotional parts, for example, for you. Which was hard to, I don't know, in a, a character, for example, in Motherland Hotel. Yeah. Or for you, let me think which one, which one. Hmm. I couldn't, as we go on with Motherland it's Hotel, hard, yes, I'll find out hard. which one. It's fine. <laughs> Let's say that the, the, the, the shooting experience with Motherland Hotel was such a dream. We had so few. Uh, possibilities. We we are living. We we lived in the hotel where we shoot the movie. Where was this? It was in Nazili, but it was in eighty seven, mm -hmm. and uh, there was no comfort at all. We could have hot water once a week, and we very hard conditions. But it was such a pleasure to make that movie with uh, beloved uh, America Vur. And um, it was such a beautiful experience. Then I, it's one of the best shooting I ever had uh, in my life. And we were so much into it that uh, we remember the scene when he killed me and I'm just uh, the, the body is, <laughs> and uh, you see only my, my, my yeah, hand yeah. On, the, on the bed and, uh, I had the feeling that uh, my my my arm was cold. Yeah. Oh, I wow. was too much into it. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was such a great experience. Mm -hmm. All the shooting, all the mm -hmm. time, and with everybody. Great. That's so. We had wonderful. a very sad movie, but we had big fun making it. And when we were playing, it was really very deep for all of us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah. so. <coughs> I thought of maybe the house of yes or broken English. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the characters are, you know, yeah, I mean, I feel like emotionally uh, the, almost every job is, is, is emotional. You know, mm -hmm. you, you create a world and then that world and a character and then the world goes away and the character goes away and it's, um, you lose, you know, a, a part of yourself and a part of the family that, that you were creating the thing with. So it can be a really beautiful, um, generous heart, you know, wholeheartedness of, of, of, of people around you. I'm, I'm thinking of the Chris, Christopher Guest movies that I've done in America that aren't mm -hmm. really big in Europe, but they're all improvised. So mm -hmm. there's an, so we're improvised, we improvise live on camera and then, um, the trust between the actors doing that is just so lovely and uh, and funny and um, and uh, giving and surprisingly emotional and dark, um, which is interesting because the movies are such big comedies. But they th those parts get cut. But yeah. the essence is so like deep and uh, and poignant and uh, wonderful to do. But I I always feel like with everything, it's some kind of, hello. <laughs> um, there's some kind of cost emotionally that, that happens. Do you feel that way too? Yeah. It's yeah. very, it's just moving, you know? Yeah. It's just like another, uh, you know, um, it's a loss and a gain. It's a paradox, you know? It it's is. very paradoxical. Um, yeah, anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And some of the uh, directors have, you know, um, a kind of gravity in your careers. Like um, you've worked <coughs> with Hal Hartley yes. more than once. You've worked with Ferdinand Ospitek more than once. And then maybe you have a special bond between them. I don't know. Do you? And how do you feel like going back uh, working with them? For my part, it, uh, I didn't work with Ferzan with uh, for the last three of his movies, and we begin again after a while. This 
uh, interruption was very good, I think, because um, um, when you are an actress who plays, uh, let's say, supporting roles, and uh, uh, when you begin to be, uh, let's say, called a f the fetish actress of this one or that one director, it's not always very good for your career because uh, it seems that you own to somebody and the other directors don't want to play to, to make act um, play to make you play in their movie because they can be afraid that you will bring some something from Farzan Ospetek's movie. Uh, uh, this is an, uh, it's not an advantage. Right, and like uh, almost like you're, you're carrying the yeah. filmmaker's other films yeah. Yeah. and the tone yeah. into their tone. Yeah, and this interruption was good for both of us. And this time we, we, we, we worked together. It was a big pleasure. We had m very much fun together. And uh, this time I, I made the part which is really opposite to all the others I have made in his movies, then let's see. <laughs> That's so great. It's a pleasure, always. Um, yeah. Before well, Faye Grimm, you started out with you know, Amateur with Hal Hartley, right? Yes, I've done like three or four films with Hal yeah. Hartley, uh, three or four with Christopher Guest. I worked with Nora Ephron three times. Yeah. Um, twice Richard Linklater? Twice Richard yeah. Linklater. Yeah. And they come back to you all the time. <laughs> they want you back. Woody <laughs> Allen twice. Oh, yes, of course. Um, and it's, um, it feels really good. Mm -hmm. It does. It feels really good um, to uh, belong in, a, in a, a director's world that you uh, feel like you should <laughs> be a part of. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a comforting uh, feeling. Because you want to be comfortable on set. You don't want it to be weird. You know, you don't want it to be, um, you, yeah, you want it to be authentic. And all those directors that I mentioned have, have a great vibe. And uh, I was talking earlier, like a, a female director is such a great, they're great at, at being a hostess yeah, in, in, yeah. This, in this way of like, oh, I wonder what's for lunch today, or, you know, how are you? And just talking, making you feel um, at home. And uh, uh, the best experiences are, are like that. And, you know, working uh, with Woody Allen was, you know, the producer, Helen, has been his producer for, um, you know, forever. So it's just kind of an, another day at work, and then you have your space to bring whatever your character is to, to, to set and, um, and feel uh, stable, <laughs> feel, to feel secure, you know? Because um, sometimes the working in, in movies or TV, you don't have those experiences. Mm -hmm. So when you work with a, a director more than once, it's, it's, they're usually good. Yes. And um, you can just do your job, yeah. Yes. I would like to ask you about your title. You've been crowned the Queen of Indies in America. Yes. Which is not, I think, something you're not very happy with, right? Um, right. It's a great honor, and everybody adopted this title, and everybody accepted <laughs> it. That yes, you are the Queen of the Indies, but then how does it affect, you know, uh, your filmography? What happens? I have no idea. That's. <laughs> I mean, it's not that I don't like it. It's just I just don't know how to... Um, I think it's like being called, you know, a name of anything. You're just kind of, uh, I don't know. It feels uh, not exact. I don't maybe alienating or just being called out or pointed out about something. Because um, I really want to. Uh, I mean, I know I'm different. I feel different. But a big part of me wants to be a part of, you know, a community. I mean, I think probably the most. Um, disheartening thing was being in uh, the independent film community and being called that and then seeing the whole thing just kind of be, you know, co-opted co into the studio system and not be able to be um, cast in an independent movie because it, to the financers, it wasn't a big enough name. So that's kind of like, 
So when you're called that, but you're not, you know, you haven't had a movie at Sundance for five or six years, you're just kind of like, well, you can stop calling me that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it didn't really, uh, it didn't really guarantee anything, so. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I'm not complaining, I just, because uh, I'm very lucky. Um, I, I have a, a career, which is like, which is unusual. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know, yeah. And I'm, I'm mostly, it's not like I walk around and people call me that, you know. Um, no, I mean, but still, but if, if like, gonna uh, start? if there's going to be an article written about you, everyone that's right. would mention that that's right, that's Queen right. of Indies, which yes. is, <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, not very uh, nice for the uh, Hollywood producers, especially, we yeah, understand that. Yeah, that's all It's all right. <laughs> But it's a little embarrassing, but I don't care. We don't have such problems in Turkey. No. There are no, no indies, there, there, are, there no are no studios. No indies, you don't no. have the media. <laughs> no. Not at all. So what is the m main um, difficulty in finding good parts or let's say inspiring movies uh, to, to participate in, in Turkey? In Turkey, I must say that uh, what I feel is the the difficulty is the imagination capacity of directors. Because, uh, for example, when they uh, saw you in a movie making such a character, then you receive 10 proposals about this yes. kind of characters. Yes, yeah. and typecasting. But, uh, yes. uh, typecasting, but it's not my, my, my. Let's say I, I'm a, I'm what is called in Italy a character, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, a character actress. Then I I I hope I'm able to to play also um, a very cruel uh, vampire. Then <laughs> a very You'd be a nice great vampire. <laughs> a oh very nice friend or neighbor. <laughs> then uh, a vampire this is neighbor. the difficulty in Turkey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I mean our guest from a few years ago, Tilda Swinton, she got a very nice vampire part. Yes, thanks to Jim yes, Jarmusch, yes, for yes, example. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some uh, vampires are really uh, very sympathetic now. <laughs> also, <laughs> they're very popular. Yeah. So um, <laughs> we're getting carried away, but maybe we should, uh, yes. you know, ask the audience. Uh, for their uh, questions too. Uh, ben tabii aldım başıma gidiyorum, konuşuyorum burada ama sizin sorularınız vardır, zamanınızdan çalmadan sorularınız varsa ya bir mikrofon e, gelmeden başlamamanızı rica edeceğiz. Elinizi kaldırırsanız sizi görebiliriz. Yok mu hiç kimseden soru? Ha, burada hanımefendi beyazlı. The entire talk is very interesting, but I was um, quite taken by your comment about the gun, which <laughs> is, you know, something that we wouldn't even think of while watching a movie or your part. Do you feel the same way with the costumes, I was wondering? Because especially female characters is, are very much associated with the costumes in certain movies that they wear. So when you talk about an actress, you say, you know, they're like iconic pictures or photos that come up with. But what is the personal experience of yours when you're associated with certain costumes or when you um, wear certain costumes in movies that you wouldn't actually wear? It's what I have done in uh, Farzan's last movie. I, I, I was dressed in a way I, I never dress in my life. And of course, it gives you another posture, you know, because when you... For example, when you have trousers, you can also sit like this or like that, or it's diff It's very different. What you wear is a condition to how you how you move. Then uh, the the the costumes I had in this last movie also was a part of my attitude in life. Of course, the costume is very important. What color did you wear? What color pants? I ha I didn't have any pants. It's all skirts. Yes, mm -hmm. only skirts. And were they which black? I never wear in my life? Mm -hmm. <laughs> then it was already a beginning like mm -hmm. this and very straight, straight, straight. Uh, skirts. And mm -hmm. then you have another way to to to to bring your body with. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's the title of this movie? 
Um, rosso Istanbul. Sc Red Istanbul. S Scarlet or Istanbul. Yes, something or like Scarlet, that. yes. Yeah. And how about you? With the yeah, costumes? Yeah, co costumes, everything. Yeah. And it really uh, it affects uh, how you move. And um, yeah, I think shoes and hair. I think it starts with shoes. And for me, I love the hair. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, in um, Cafe Society, suddenly we look at the screen in Cannes, the opening one. Oh, she's blonde. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I went blonde to go to Cannes last year because a friend of mine who designed my dress told me to go, I should have hair to match my dress, and so I did. Why not? And then uh, Woody uh, saw my hair and cast me in Cafe Society. And then I got another part as a kind of a blonde. So your instincts, and, and I had good instincts with that. It actually helped me get another job. And it was fun and kind of a strange thing for a woman in her 40s to, to go blonde all of a sudden and uh, continue to work. And so I got to play um, a character named uh, Rad Taylor in uh, Cafe Society. And uh, I got to play my age, you know. Hmm. Not someone, not a, a, a woman acting like a, you know, a 26-year-old, which is kind of a style <laughs> now in American film. So that was, that was, um, that was fun. That was, that was great. So yeah, it affects you a lot. Uh, and this one was what, you know what I mean? Actually, I was trying to make it an icebreaker, the first one. But my question is, uh, among 700 top movies, only 21% is uh, main casted by, by women, as, as I see. And only 1.7% is, is uh, directed by, by women. So considering the women are more talented and gifted than men, there is clearly an unequal opportunity over there. So how do you see that unequal opportunity lays? Is it in, on the education side? Is it in the offering side for the hit movies, or, or is, it, is, it, is, it, is it on the performance? And the other one is, uh, uh, if it had been your, uh, your choice, to, um, your nickname, I mean, what would you uh, like to be, your nickname, in, instead of Queen of Indies? Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, just simply Queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am so jet lagged, and I was really into what you were talking about. Now I've forgotten about was it uh, who's how do we change this in storytelling and filmmaking? Um, well, I think the problem is is that it's mainly a business that the people making movies are went to business school. That's what I have to say. So about that. <laughs> so if we can get um, the people back uh, to making movies and in, in charge who have relationships with the artists and the auteurs and the real storytellers, then our movies will be better and these men won't be threatened by women or want them in their movies so they can, you know, flirt with them and feel young again. I, you know, who knows? I mean... <laughs> I, I, hope, I don't know how, what the solution is, um, but it's, it's like, I, you know what, it's, yeah, it's a shame, you know, it's just a shame, but it's, it's also getting boring, too, like, I, I, I don't think movies are doing well now in, in Hollywood, so they, you know, there's, a, there's the, the, the, the romantic comedy doesn't get made anymore because they're not, they don't see it as a viable commodity in show business right now. So uh, 10 years ago, uh, that was different. Now it's not because we need action films to make lots of money and superhero movies to make lots of money. But I think there's, a, uh, you know, there's scripts around that are really good that have a hard time being produced and hopefully they'll start crawling out of the woodwork. And um, 
yeah, we can be entertained by those, those kinds of movies again. I think we need the revolution. I do too. Exactly. But not only in the movie. Yeah. We need a female revolution. Human. Human. Yeah. Yeah, also, that could help. <laughs> it's a human thing, yeah. Let's begin with Pay human. Hepinize merhabalar. Üç güzel bayan olarak Türkiye'de, Avrupa'da, Amerika'da sizlerin oyunculuk anlamında çok güzel şansınız var. Ama Afganistan'da, İran'da, Suudi Arabistan'daki bayanlar hakkında neler söylemek istiyorsunuz? Oyunculuk, yönetmenlik anlamında... Türkiye'de, Avrupa'da ve Amerika'da sizlerin şanslarınız yüksek. Yani aynı kişiler olarak e, Afganistan, Pakistan, Hindistan, İran, Suudi Arabistan gibi yerlerdeki ülkelerdeki kadınlar adına ne söyleyeceksiniz? E, Valla onlar adına benim bir şey söylemem söz konusu değil. Herkes kendi adına konuşuyor. Ama İran'da çok güzel filmler yapılıyor biliyorsunuz ve e, çok başarılı kadın oyuncular var. Ee, çok uzun zamandan beri Pakistan ya da Afganistan'dan çıkmış bir film seyretmedim. Ama İran konusunda gerçekten dünya sinemasında yeri olan çok iyi oyuncuların, çok iyi yönetmenlerin olduğu bir sinema. Evet bazılarının belirli sıkıntıları olabiliyor. Mesela Cafer Panahi gibi yetenekli bir yönetmen uzun zaman ev hapsinde kaldı ama onu da film yaparak aşmayı başardı. Ee, zor koşullara rağmen sinema yapmaya devam ediyorlar. Ee, bir tek İran hakkında bunları söyleyebilirim size ama onlar adına bir şey söyleyemem. Çünkü onlar kendileri için konuşmalılar diye düşünüyorum. Um, would you like to say something about this? A comment about uh, the position of women uh, in the countries Afghanistan, Iran, Saudi Arabia mainly, let's say, uh, Middle East and Asian countries, because we, we have more opportunities uh, in the way to success in our parts of the world. Would you like to comment on that? It's, it's ter- I mean, wh- what to say? I mean... Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> ona bir müdahale etmek istiyorum. Şu kelimeyi kullanmasanız tüylerimiz diken diken oluyor. Bayan kelimesini kadın <gülüyor> diyelim. <gülüyor> ya mesela kadının kadın olduğunu kabul etmekle Türkiye'de başlarsak biraz daha hani aşama kaydediyoruz ya. O çirkin kelimeyi gerçekten kullanmadan. Evet. Hı-hı. Ben bu ülkelerde olan bütün yapı, yapılan her şeyi takip ediyorum. Ee, bizzat e, tanıdığım kadın yönetmenler var. Ee, İran'da e, yani neredeyse e, batıdakinden e, daha rahat diyebileceğimiz bir fırsat eşitliği var. Fırsat eşitliği bakımından fi, sinemaz için söylüyorum sadece. Ee, İranlı e, kadın yönetmen, yapımcı ve oyuncular oldukça güçlü. Sadece e, yani yurt dışında gösterilen İran sanat filmleri için değil, aslında popüler sinemada hatta biraz daha baskınlar. Televizyonda da yoğun biçimde çalışıyorlar. Afganistan'da iki tane güçlü kadın yönetmen var. Bunlardan daha şey, deneyimli olan Şerbanu Sedat'ın filmi Wolf and Sheep, Kurt ve Kuzu daha yeni kan film festivalinde yönetmenlerin 15 günü bölümünde filmi gösterildi ve bölümün büyük ödülünü de kazandı. Ee, biliyorsunuz Suudi Arabistan'dan bugüne kadar bir tek film çıktı Vecide ee, ama o da yeterince başarılı çünkü orada kadınların e, sosyal hayatı bu şekilde e, katılım için fırsatı olmadığı için bugüne kadar yapılan e, film ancak öyle. Yani bu ülkelerin hiçbiri zaten aynı kefeye konacak halde değiller. Yani bir tanesini e, bambaşka bir yönetim biçimi var geleneksel şeriatta. Diğeri e, yine yani İslam ülkesi bile diye kategorize edemeyiz. Çünkü bir e, Şii ülke, orada İslam Cumhuriyeti var. Afganistan derseniz zaten savaşta bir ülke. Ve yani kendilerinin bu kuşak bildiği e, şey kadarıyla hep savaştaydılar. Yani zaten bu ülkeleri bir aynı kefeye koyamıyoruz. Hepsinin koşulları çok farklı, kültürleri çok farklı. Dolayısıyla e, yönetmenlerinin bu, buldukları olanaklar farklı. Yurt dışı ile ilişkileri e, farklı. Ekonomileri e, çok farklı. O yüzden de bir genelleme yapmamızda yarar var. 
E, ama kadınlar açısından zaten şunu da biliyoruz ki oranladığınız zaman batı ile doğu, kuzey ile güney arasında bir orantı farkı yok. Fırsat eşitsizliği her yerde. İran gibi büyük film endüstrisi olan bir ülkede bir avantaj görünüyor sayısal olarak. Ama buna ne deriz? E, dışı sizi yakar, içi beni dediğimiz durumda çalışıyorlar. E, aynı şey Türkiye'de de yeni bir kuşağımız var. Oldukça e, yani güçlü ve yetenekli genç kadın yönetmenlerimiz var. Ama yine aynı şekilde e, dışı sizi, içi bizi yakar koşullarda e, çalışıyorlar. E, elbette e, iş filmlerine, ticari sinemaya baktığımız zaman eşitsizliğin varlığını orada görüyoruz. Yani art house dediğimiz sinemada bir oran var, evet. Ama e, ticari sinemada zaten kadın sadece e, yani bir komedideki e, seks objesi olarak sunulduğu için üzerinde bile konuşmayacağımız bir durum söz konusu. Uh, I had to come in, sorry for uh, the intrusion. The, the profession asked me to do that. Başka sorusu olan var mı acaba? E, arkadan var galiba değil mi? Buyurun lütfen. Hello. I was curious to... <gülüyor> I was curious to know if um, you feel like you have more character freedom with uh, female directors versus male directors. Personally, not. <laughs> yeah, me neither. <laughs> They're too strong, you see. <laughs> Başka sorusu olan var mı acaba? Önde ben bir el görüyorum, başka göremiyorum. İki tane önde. Evet, hanımefendiye ilk söz vermiştik. Önce evet. beyefendiye verelim. Hello. Hey. Uh, what was it like to work with Louis C.K.? Is he really huggable? Because he looks like... Uh, Is he really what? Huggable. Huggable? Yes. Uh, that's personal. <laughs> um, I can't talk about it. Um, Yeah, so Louis C.K. and I did yeah. a reading, at a benefit reading for his kids' school in the, in the West Village. And um, he's a wonderful uh, self-creator, uh, auteur, comic, actor, mm -hmm. writer. Um, I probably say writer, comic, actor, in that order. Oh. But before that, I would, director and director, uh, jet lag. Um, Yeah, we did a reading of Beyond Therapy, this play by Christopher Durang at this uh, little theater in the, in the West Village. And so he, uh, afterwards, he said we should, you know, work together. And I said, here's my number. And a few days, he, you know, he texted me. I was eating alone in, in a restaurant around the corner from, from my apartment. And um, we hung out for about three hours. And he said... Okay, I know, I know what I'm going to do. Uh, I know what I want to do with you. It's a couple of things. Um, one involves a, a, a woman I, who told me this story at an airport about her, uh, her mother, and she, she has cancer. And the other is an, an artist friend that I know um, that I'm kind of feeling like something I've wanted to do for a while now. And uh, yeah, and so... I said, great, Walk, you know, and he walked me home. And he said, do you want to come to my roof and see the view from my um, building? Because I have a big roof, you know, roof garden in this, in this building. And then I walked up to the roof and I bent over and he was like, oh my God, don't do that. So that's where he got the inspiration for that, for that moment. But within two weeks he wrote that, um, it's almost like a novella, you know, he wrote that wonderful, um, arc for me on a show. Um, he is a very fast working director, uh, very focused, um, and kind of like a rock star. <laughs> uh, would you consider doing more TV? You know, I just finished doing, um, I worked with Jesse Eisenberg on the Woody Allen movie, and he just wrote, uh, he wrote a book, they published a book last year, And he's, uh, we did what's called a pitch pilot um, with Louis C.K.'s company, uh, Jax Media. And um, so we'll see if anyone wants to buy it. 
it's me and um, playing a, a really awful woman <laughs> who's great. You know, she's such a bitch. And she's just really, all, you know, in the best way. Um, I really enjoy playing her. And a 10-year-old. And she's, she's just totally unconscious and um, doesn't know herself, can't be, you know, doesn't know how to be. And uh, hopefully if it goes, it, it'll be... A, a woman who awakens to the <laughs> to herself or whatever, but uh, so that hopefully it, it will it will sell, and they'll we'll see if it if it strikes a chord. He he took it to a few places, and they wanted him to change the writing to make it funnier and less natural. Oh. So he said, "No, I want to do this myself," and uh, he got to, and he's t talented. Mm -hmm. Talented in, uh, writer and director. He directed me. Yeah. So, yeah. Pekala. Son soru. İlk soruyu soran hanımefendiden başka el görmüyorum. Var mı? Görmüyor olabilir miyim? Yok. Peki o zaman siz de başladık. Siz de kapatıyoruz. I stepped in late, so I'm sorry if you already mentioned this, but there has been some kind of a heated debate on the inequality of um, pay when it comes to male and female characters in you know big productions would you wh where do you stand in that debate do you really agree that there is a discrepancy between male and female characters given part in big productions in terms of pay uh yeah they make a lot more mo men make a lot more money than women they always have and, and they're still they still are and it's weird um, I don't. I don't know. I mean, it's a weird thing now, right? Like, oh, everyone's talking about this, you know, in the media, and people are talking. But will it change, or will it remain, you know, a business? I don't know. I don't know if it, if there will be equality for for equal for equal pay. But it's absurd. But the industry is perverse. It's not like. You know, yes. there's an actress I know named Samantha Bathis whose, whose boyfriend is a firefighter. And a friend of mine, uh, Craig, is dating a corporate um, real estate guy. And when they hear stories of show business, they're like, I could never do that. I don't know how you handle it. Like, it's crazy. And there are no rules. And it's like a casino. And people get away with um, a lot. Like unequal pay, like not paying um, <laughs> a big star to, because uh, she's a woman. Yeah, it's, it's weird. It's very, I don't, it's very weird. Let's say in Turkey, I don't have any idea of how much uh, earn uh, an actor or another one. And in Turkey, I must say, I'm already happy if we are paid something. That's yeah. it, already. <laughs> And I will, I will make a comment. It will be nasty, but I will say that. This is a country where Erkan Petekkaya earns more than Serra Yilmaz. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> That's so much for the Turkish film and the TV series industry, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so it was really uh, amazing to talk to you both. You too. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope Thanks I have so been Thank able you, to Barbara. handle that. <laughs> but it's been a great honor. Thanks for joining us here Thank today. You. Thank you guys. So, Enjoy your day. <laughs>